OK. So when evaluating all six trigonometric functions, ladies and gentlemen, this is a step-by-step -step type of problem. The first problem we need to do is determine where is this, where is this angle. So in our first section, we practice drawing the angle. So we need to have 4 pi over 3. So the first thing I do is I know that halfway around my quadrant is pi. Since my denominator is in thirds, that means this is the same thing as 3 pi over 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break my quadrant. I'm going to break, I'm sorry, the top into thirds. Right? Do you guys see this? 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. Okay. However, this is actually over pi. So I'm going to break the bottom into thirds as well. So now I need to determine where is this point. Well, starting at my initial side in standard form, going in the positive direction, I have 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds. OK? Good. So that's my angle. And that's my, that's my initial, that's my terminal side. Now the next thing I need to do is determine if I have a unit circle, what is that coordinate point? So then I go back to the unit circle that I have memorized. And I go back and look and I say, all right, well, what are, what are the rest of my points that I have? What are these points? Well, we know at 30 degrees, I have square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. At 45 degrees, I have square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. And at 60 degrees, I have uh, 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. All right? So now what I need to kind of determine is think about this and you know, say this is pi thirds. See about you know, how far is this now off of each one of these uh, how far is this off away from my unit circle? Well, you guys can see that here, if this is in thirds, then this angle would have to be 60 degrees, right? 60, 120, 180. So you can see that this point of 60 degrees is a direct reflection of this point. Does everybody see that? Does everybody see how that's a direct reflection of that? So therefore, if this is in the first quadrant, and this one's in the third quadrant, how do my x and y coordinates change? They're just going to be both be negative. So I look at this, I say that's 60 degrees. Therefore, this coordinate point is just going to be negative 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2. So it's the exact same point, but it's just going to be negative now. All right? So now we need to determine our sine and cosine and tangent. So we have sine. Cosine, I guess this is of t. So sine of t, cosine of t, and tangent of t. Now remember, only when our point is on the unit circle, only when the point is on the unit circle, sine of t equals the y-coordinate of that point. So what is the y-coordinate of the point we have? The reason only why it's on the unit circle, because remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? But since our point is on the unit circle, our hypotenuse has a measurement of 1. So it just ends up being our opposite side, which is our y-coordinate. Cosine only on the unit circle is represented by our x value of our point, which is equal to negative 1 half. Tangent, which is represented, um, tangent, which is on, re on our unit circle, is represented by x, I'm sorry, x over y. No, y over x. Opposite over adjacent, right? y over x. So our opposite, that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, Kobe, do you remember what you do? Yeah, oh, OK. You're yeah, you divide the fraction on the bottom by what? Exactly. That's why you might be want to be writing this one down. You multiply by its reciprocal. All right? So I multiply by its reciprocal. That just goes to 1. That goes to 1. And then these 2s, these divide out to 1. The negatives go to positive, And I'm just left with 
the square root of 3. Bless you. Now we got to do the reciprocal functions. The cosecant of t, when on the unit circle, the cosecant of t, when on the unit circle, represents 1 over y, which is now going to be 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2. Again, I'm going to work these out long for this section. But then, guys, I'm going to start making these a little quicker. So write them down so you understand them. But the more practice you guys get with this, you'll start seeing a lot of the shortcuts. Again, I multiply by the reciprocal, 2 over the square root of 3. And let's multiply by the negative. Okay, That now goes to 1. And I'm left with 2 over radical 3. But again, we can't leave the square root of 3 on the bottom. So we'll multiply by the square root of 3 on top and bottom. Therefore, my final answer is 2 squared of 3 over 3. Okay. Now we go to cosine, cosine. The reciprocal of cosine is the secant function, which is 1 over x. So for that one, we're just going to have 1 over negative 1 half. Again, we have to multiply by the reciprocal. Oh, that's a negative, isn't it? Yes. That's supposed to be a negative. So I multiply by a negative 2 over 1. Therefore, that again goes to 1. And that's just going to become a negative 2. And then I have the cotangent. So to do the cotangent, that's going to become, when on the unit circle, my x coordinate over my y coordinate. One looks like it's going to be fun. So that equals neg or pos yeah, negative 1 half divided by um, negative square root of 3 over 2. All right. These are the ones I like a lot because the 2's just actually delimitate out. But let's go and multiply by the reciprocal so you guys can see that. So if I multiply by 2 over the square root of 3 times 2 over the square root of 3, you notice here those just go to 1. My negatives go to a positive. Here, my 2's delete, factor out, or uh, divide out. And I just have 1 over the square root of 3. Then I multiply again by the rational. Final answer, square root of 3 over 3. OK? And that's it. It's a lot of work.